Okay, so now that we have the concentrated mass, let's set this up and do a um, static G loading. We're gonna do an analysis where it's like we're gonna set up like we'll do we'll do uh, how about just for the heck of it we'll do five G's in the Y direction and then three G's in the X and Z direction okay and I need some constraints for this so uh, what should we do I'm gonna I'm gonna pin it at these points and these points okay all right so the first thing I'm gonna do is let's let's create a, a, a the SPC load collectors so I'm gonna create a load collector I'm gonna call it SPCs all right so there it is oh, there it is somewhere there it is and let's define the SPC so we're gonna go under analysis constraints so we're gonna fully constrain everything let's not make it that this point and this point and this point and this point and we're going to create that okay so there that's where the constraints are going to be all right and uh it's gonna be kind of weird loading i guess i should have probably picked these maybe i'll pick those two right. let's let's do let's not do that let's do this and this to make it more interesting and then this and this okay how about that? So it's like fixed at the corners, okay? I have no idea what this is, but whatever. Say it's where the landing gear is, right? All right, now, uh, there we go. So now I've got those, and now we're going to create the 5G force in the Y direction. So we're going to do that again through a load collector. So I'm going to create a load collector, and I'm going to call it 5G in the Y direction. So I can keep track of all this stuff. shade of red now down here is where I'm going to change the card image so it's going to use a grav card and not just be a general SPC or force load collector so if we scroll down here a little bit down to the G's there it is grab and now this changes this so we're going to use the standard G 386 inches per second squared and it's going to be minus five G's in the Y direction. So I'm gonna put a minus five here, all right? So there you go, so now that's defined. Now let's do the other two in the X and Y direction. Those are gonna be three G's. So uh, one thing you can do is you can actually copy this. You can right click on this and say duplicate. And here we can change it to three G in the X direction, if you will. All right, and so now I've got that, but we got to edit it, right? So it's not going to be minus five in the two direction. It's going to be three zero zero because that's in the x direction. We can change the color if we want. I guess I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. And then we can copy it again or create a new one. It's up to you. And it's going to be three G in the z direction. Okay. And we're going to go in here and change this from 0 to 3 on the Z direction, OK? All right, so now I've got three loadings to model 3 Gs in the X direction, 3 Gs in the Z direction, and minus 5 Gs in the Y direction, OK? The sign really actually doesn't matter because it's linear. So anyway, um, fine. So now I'm going to define a load case or I'm sorry, a load step for each one of those loadings. So we're gonna do one simulation for the 5G and the Y, another simulation for the 3G and X, and another simulation for 3G and the Z. So they're gonna be three different solutions, okay? So it's gonna be three different load steps. So we're gonna do that, create load step. Where's load step? Create load step. Step. See, I think this something happened. The interface changed. 
Lower steps must be somewhere else. Where do we do this? Uh, set up. Maybe it's set up. Create. Load steps. Okay, I don't know. They put it up there now, so it's under. Set up. Create. Load steps. And so it's going to go somewhere. I don't know where it's going to go. Okay. This is totally different. Oh, you know what's going on? Sorry. My preferences are wrong, okay? I have to set my preferences here. They're at default, so I, I have to change my user profile. That's why everything is weird. Sorry, Optistruct. You probably already have this done, okay? So there we go. So there's the Optistruct. So now it's gonna change stuff. Sorry. Hopefully it doesn't crash. So now, now, uh, create, now it looks more like it used to, okay? Create load step, sorry about that. And so first let's do the 5G and the Y. So these are all going to be uh, static analyses, linear static analysis. It's going to use for SPCs those green fixed points in the SPC load collector. But what's going to change is the load for this one. We're going to pick the 5GY gravity card, okay? And that should be good. So now we've got that load step, right? So let's copy these. I think I can duplicate these and edit this. So let's change this to be, oops, let's rename it. This will be 3G in the X direction. All right. Um, and for that one, we're going to just change the Everything else will be the same. It's still linear static. It's still going to use the same SPCs, but the load collector is now going to be the 3G definition in the X direction, okay? And now we can do the same for the Z direction, right? So duplicate that, change it to Z, and then go down here and change this to be the 3G and Z. All right, so now I've got three different load steps. Uh, linear static analyses, three different linear static analyses, but the, one of them is doing 5Gs and Y, the other one is doing 3Gs and X, and then and the third one is 3Gs and Cs. So we're actually ready to go here. We should be good to go. Assuming I set everything else up correctly, I think I did. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save it as something else. Okay, and I'm gonna run it, okay? So let's hope this works. So. We're going to go under Analysis, Optistruct, and again, you don't have to do this, but it's just going to be an analysis. We're going to run everything, and then we hit Optistruct, and let's let's hope for the best. Oh, okay. I don't have a pro uh, I've got some errors here. On my... Okay. Well, okay. I didn't... Okay. I thought I had this set up. So I don't have the property for the C-bars. Okay, let's just do this super quick. I thought I had this set up. Oh, I must have deleted those. Okay, so let's create a property. I didn't do this. So there are bar elements. I'm gonna use a P bar L card. I'm gonna make them cylindrical. So uh, property. Uh, this is the frame uh, C bars, right? It's gonna be a P bar L. Yeah, it's fine to change it. And the material is going to be uh, the aluminum. And then, yeah, the shape will be a uh, cylindrical rod. So the first dimension is just the, the, the radius. So let's make these uh, one inch. So that means the radius is going to be a half, OK? 0 0.0, 0 0.5, OK? And now I've got to assign this to everything, right? So we'll go back to 1D. Unless I can do it by the component. Can I do it by component? I don't know. Can I use this property? Let's see if it, I have. Okay, so that's gonna assign that property to each one of those C bar elements. I think it did. Now if we wanna double check, 
let's change the coloring so it's by property. Okay, that's good. Yeah, they're all green. So that means it used that green property card. If I change it to some other weirdo color like uh, this yellowy thing, an orangey thing, there you go. So, so it looks like those are assigned, that's good. Uh, let's just go back to the coloring by part, or actually by component, I think that's what we, the default, right? So that's good. So I think we're good here. I think now if I run it, it should work. Okay, let's overwrite it, solve it again, and see what it says. So no, no, no issues yet. I think we're good. Oh, we did get an error. Oh, it didn't like my RBE2 element. There are a number of degrees of freedom with double dependency. Here, grid ID 14. Okay, so it has a problem with grid point 14. So let's see which one is grid point 14. So let's, I'm gonna put on the node numbers, okay? So tools, numbers, and then nodes, and then let's just, I'm gonna pick all of them. And then we're gonna say display, or whatever. I don't, yeah, all on. And so there you go. So node 14 is this one. Yeah, I'm kind of not too surprised on that one. That is the issue because the problem is, this is a little subtle, the, the mathematical constraint of the rigid elements, the, the, the RBE2s, it doesn't like having those be dependent and then also an SPC there, okay? So actually when it's fixed, right, there's really no load that goes through that point, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is actually edit this RBE2 and delete those points and then I think it'll work, okay? So let's go to 1D, Rigids, and I think I can update and I'm gonna pick this, let's see if I can grab it, there you go, and Let's change the attempt. Mm, you know what? I don't see an easy way to do it. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna delete it and make a new one because it's pretty easy to do. So to tools, delete. I'm gonna delete that element. I'm gonna delete it. So there we go. And now let me just go back and create a new RBE2 rigid. So again, we're gonna use multiple modes. And uh, here is the uh, independent node, and then here are the dependent nodes. So let's just pick these, okay? We're gonna create. All right, so now I'm gonna run, and I think now we should be good. Well, let's see what the next error is. I always forget that. That sometimes happens with the constraints. Okay, so this, this time it ran, okay? So it ran, all right? So let's look at the results. It's going to pull up Hyper uh, View. Right now. Maybe. It's pulling it up. All right, so there is, I don't know why it always rotates it, but it has a different default orientation than Hyper Mesh, but so be it. Let's get it on screen. All right, so there is the model. Let's put it like in the orientation that it is, you know, was when we made it in hyper mesh. And here you go. So now up here you can see actually we have the three subcases. So if we want to look at the stresses for the 5G in the Y direction, we'll select that subcase. And now let's color it by um, the elements, the one dimensional element stresses, okay? And again, you know, I encourage you to look through these and see uh, what they mean with regard to the uh, element stresses. And then if we hit apply, so there you go. And I think, let's see how bad the deformations are. Well, it's really not deforming much at all. I think I have to, let's increase, let's look at the deform mode. 
Let's make it a little bit bigger. There it goes. So okay, so you can see that makes sense. That is the sort of the five G in the Y direction. And it makes sense we get sort of the, the alternating bending stresses. There's really nothing going on here at the top. Okay, so that's good. Now if we go and want to look at the 3G in the X direction, we just change the subcase to that one. And now the, the stress has changed, and here you can see it's moving in the um, X direction, and then we can change this to the 3Gs and the Z. And there you go. So in the 3Gs and the Z, we're getting a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a twisty thing going on here. It's hard to see. If I make this a bit bigger, there you can see what's going on with the 3Gs and the Z. And that's because the weight is not quite symmetric, okay? So that's how we do it. All right, so I'm going to stop there.